Good afternoon, sir. How's it going? How we doing, guys? We're doing okay. We're doing okay. We we were. I I don't know if you've heard already, but we were just talking about this. Is Ernie Zampezi has passed away, and I was kind of hoping. Oh. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm bringing that information, and I hate to put you on the spot, and if it's not a good time, I understand, but I'm hoping you could tell us about what he meant to this organization over the years. Absolutely. Well, it's uh, first of all, it is the first I've heard of it, and you know, Ernie was so uh, special uh, to our family, uh, to Jerry and myself in particular, but to uh, you know the entire Cowboys family, uh, the organization, and you know, certainly... Uh, you know, he just uh, was such an easy transition when Norv, who walked in here and done such a great job with Troy and getting us to, uh, you know, winning Super Bowls and then to be able and, you know, Norv teed it up for us to transition right uh, into into Ernie was just, uh, you know, as smooth as it gets. And, of course, Norv was a, a student under Ernie and uh, but Ernie is, uh, you know, to this day, uh, one of the best, if not the best in the business in terms of developing quarterbacks and, uh, you know, designing and developing uh, Super Bowl championship offenses. And, uh, you know, he was uh, not only a great coach, but a, a great individual, somebody Jerry and I uh, really cherish being around. Uh, you know, he had a... Uh, certain angst uh, uh always remember is back when jerry and i almost always rode the team plane uh he had a real uh, serious uh uh fear angst anxiety to fly mm. and uh, uh he really had to get himself in the right uh frame of mind to get on an airplane but uh you know he was just a joy and uh certainly i, I know he will be missed uh you know got to know his son real well his uh his son as well uh real well and Certainly, my prayers go out to the entire Zampezi family and, you know, certainly one of the great uh, men uh, in the history of the NFL. Well, Steven, you, you guys have a lot of a lot to get accomplished in the next couple of days here as far as getting this roster down to 53. What is the what do you think the position is that's given you the most difficulty of saying, we you know, we got too many good players here that we got to we got to look at? Well, we've got some moving parts here, and there's a lot of ways, uh, you know, with all the rules uh, uh, concerning uh, how, how how you work your roster. Uh, certainly there's, you know, guys who are going to be on our roster for a day and then move over to the, uh, you know, injured reserve designated uh, to return. And, uh, uh, you know, we've got uh, certainly a guy like Damone Clark who's going right over there and then uh, will be eligible to return after four games. You got guys like a Tyron Smith and uh, Washington who'll be on for a day and then move over to that category. Uh, so there's ways to, you know, to uh, uh, strategize and get those guys over and and hopefully not have to expose some of the young guys you were uh, concerned about. But uh, you know, it is a a roster uh, I believe with a lot of young depth and uh, uh, defensively, uh, you know, it's probably a more weighted toward the defensive side of the ball in terms of uh, uh, our numbers uh, situation. I think we've got great depth as you, you know, the fronts, the, uh, the linebackers and the back end. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's been a very competitive camp. I think it's made for a real strong camp and uh, feel good about where our football team is. Does it, does the perception of, lack of preparedness at tackle bother you at all? Because I know a lot of people have been saying that, and I get the sense that y'all don't agree that y'all were not prepared for injury contingencies with Tyron Smith. Yeah, you know, that's why we drafted, you know, at the end of the day, why we did draft uh, Tyler Smith. Uh, you know, and I think we were I think we were very much on record as saying we thought he was going to be our future uh, left tackle. We were looking for ways to get him on the field, uh, you know, uh, sooner and thought, uh, you know, with Tyron coming into camp healthy, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, Tyron's one of the best in the business uh, when healthy, if not the best. And uh, that's why we had, you know, we're playing him at guard. But I think he's, uh, you know, we really think his long-term future in the NFL is left tackle. That's why we drafted him uh, in the first round to ultimately uh, be our future left tackle. And, you know, I uh, feel good about where that is. And then, of course, we're getting, well, let's go back here. Uh, you know, you hate he missed two or three weeks of camp. But, uh, you know, obviously felt good about him. And Ball is really his, uh, you know, he's almost a rookie. He didn't 
hardly get to pad up any last year, and you know he's made progress in camp. So uh, you know feel good about that, and certainly uh, the interior spots with uh, you know with Connor McGovern, uh, I think he's had a really solid camp, and uh, Farniak and, and and those type of players, we you know feel good about where we're going and uh, what our situation looks like now. You know, I say it always. We're always looking to upgrade our our roster, and certainly, uh, you know, we'll look uh, to continue to uh, uh, make ourselves better. It's you know, certainly the offensive line is one where we aren't necessarily loaded with depth there, but uh, certainly something that we'll continue to look at as uh, uh, as things uh, uh, come to fruition here over the next uh, two or three days. As teams uh, are going to have to expose a lot of players, and we'll look at that and look at the veterans that are out there and see if uh, we need to, uh, you know, beef up right there. Steven, is it uh, Tyler Smith? Is he going to be able to practice today, tomorrow? Is he feeling healthy right now? Yes, he's ready to go. And uh, barring something unforeseen to, to start practice, uh, he was a, a green light uh, to start practice today. Is is the plan at the moment uh, for Tampa, for your left tackle then to be an in-house person? The plan is for it to be an in-house person. Okay, all right. And and, and I, w- I was kind of curious on your thoughts. We didn't get to see a lot of Anthony Barr. Uh, what would you feel about Anthony Barr's first game out there during this preseason run? Well, Anthony Barr is an established veteran in this league that's played at uh, very high levels. And, uh, you know, we didn't want to, uh, you know, he came into camp in midstream and we didn't want to expose him to, uh, uh, you know, uh, too much uh, right away, so it was by design that we didn't, uh, you know, overuse him, but feel great about uh, uh, what he's going to do to help our defense out. How are we feeling about the, I know a lot of people talk about the depth, but I guess the strength of the wide receiving core, and how does that work in cooperation with tight ends and how many y'all might carry there? Well, I think, uh, you know, it's uh, pretty well documented starting to seem like these uh, two young tight ends have certainly uh, – you know, come through for us. Uh, you know, we drafted uh, Ferguson in the fourth, and he's been everything and more we could have hoped for. And then, of course, getting Hendershot as a college free agent, I think, is starting to look like a, a real value for us. And, uh, you know, he's really stepped up. And uh, as you saw the other night, made plays, and game's not too big for him. He's competitive. And I just feel like those uh, uh, those three tight ends have really earned, uh, earned their way. Uh, uh, on to being a big part of this season. And then, you know, the receiver numbers are, are uh, you know, we've got some young guys who have really been competitive out there. And, uh, and, you know, when you look at the, you know, obviously Noah had a solid camp from start to finish. And then you had Simi coming on and Houston uh, coming on and Tolbert uh, uh, playing well. So it's a, we really feel like we've got a good group out there. And then, of course, you've uh, got Turpin, who's a, uh, you know, shows how dynamic he can be as a returner. And then uh, certainly Kellen can use him uh, in situations uh, on the offensive side. Now, Stephen, a couple of weeks ago, my co-host Kevin, uh, he, his wife gave birth to their, their first child together. And oh, I'm sure, I know you Thank got you. the grandbaby oh, that, that just came into the world. Is there a chance y'all get hooked up for play dates? Oh, We should. We actually should. I'd never thought it'd be like this, but uh, <laughs> uh, in terms of uh, – just how uh, crazy I'd be about uh, a baby at this point in my life. But uh, uh, when I got my hands on my first uh, grandbaby, which is a granddaughter, uh, uh, it was uh, incredible. So uh, I'm so happy for my daughter and her husband, Cameron. And uh, we did bring uh, little uh, Eugene, uh, uh, Eugene Elizabeth into the world and uh, thrilled to have her. I know we probably shouldn't do this with kids, but do you already create (laughs) scouting reports for how different kids could project to the NFL? My son was born very large. I start to wonder if he could play offensive line. That's not right to do, though, right? (laughs) Of course not, but I've got mine already slated to be either an All-American volleyball player or or she's pretty long or a uh, a lacrosse player. So uh, I can already see she's got the eye of the tiger. 
She, he says, he says, Kevin, 365, 24-7, 365 yeah. talent evaluation. So always, no matter what age. All right. Well, that that's how we're doing things. We appreciate it very much. Good, sir. Look forward to talking with you all season long right here on The Fan. Hey, great to be on with you guys. And congratulations on the baby. Thank there you. Thank right. you very, very much. 